This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the machines that I currently use in my workshop, why I chose them, what they do, and how they fit into my workflow. I hope this video helps you out. Maybe if you're looking for some of the machines that I use, maybe I can shed some light onto the things that I like about the machines or don't like about the machines. Sit back, relax, and just enjoy. Let's get going. This is the Atom 25 ton clicker press. 25 ton meaning 25 tons of pressure when you push these two buttons, 25 tons of pressure coming down on your dies. If you don't know what a clicker press is or what it's used for, it is pretty much a huge cookie cutter machine that you place your dies, these little guys right here, on the roll of leather that you spread out across the machine. The good thing about this machine is the size of the bed and I chose to go with the largest machine I possibly could because I make a variety of different kinds of products and to limit myself to a smaller bed, the price would be cheaper, but I just couldn't produce all of the products that I make in this shop. Ugh. This is one of the clicker dies that I use in this machine and it actually just fits, so I'm very excited that I don't have to get a bigger machine, which would be a lot more money. So it can click out really big pieces, which is really, really helpful for what we do here. And it saves a ton of time because when you're rolling out a hide and measuring everything with a template, you still have to cut it out after you trace it and all this stuff. This is what we were using before and it's a big piece of acrylic. It's great, I used it many times, but it just, it takes so much time to trace, cut, punch, all this stuff when a die can do it 50, 60, 70 times faster. This right here is the Mighty Wonder 4 ton manual clicker press. Unlike that press over there, this is all done by hand. It fits a lot smaller dies, so if you're working with smaller things like wallets and some smaller journals or keychains, or what I use it for mostly today is embossing. It's a perfect embossing machine. So these are little dies, little embossing dies that I have made up, that I've designed in Illustrator. I sent it off to a machine shop. Um, I get a lot of questions on where I get these done. These are done by a company called Sterling Marking Products. You can check them out on Instagram. They're based in London, Ontario. So if you're from Ontario, Canada, Sterling Marking Products is where I get them done. Getting back to the machine itself, it has a smaller swivel cutting head surface. It comes with a cutting block that I use one side for cutting, one side for embossing. This is really cool because you can adjust the height of your clicker head. So if you're embossing smaller or shorter dies, you can change the height of this head. What I like about this machine too, it is very, very robust. It is very strong. It's all made from steel. It is heavy. This, this little thing is heavy. I can hardly lift it up by myself. Very well made. It is an American made machine by Weaver Tools. I will leave a link in the description below and you can go check them out. If you are considering a clicker press and you don't want to go up to a big hydraulic one, this is a perfect, perfect machine for you to start on. And I use it every day. Max, who is behind the camera today, uses it every single day. And is it a good machine? Yeah. Max likes it. If Max approves, I approve. This is the Dream Factory gold foil heat embosser machine thingamajig. I don't even know what it's called. What is, what is it called? The heat embosser, we'll go with it. It's on their website. Lee from Dream Factory makes these incredible tools, whether they are these, whether they are these stitching ponies, he makes some really cool and innovative stuff. It is a little bit more pricey than other machines on the market, but it does such a great job and I'll tell you why I like this machine. First of all, it's very customizable. Most machines on the market today don't necessarily allow you to use any stamp you like. And so with this machine, you can add any one of your stamps into the provided holder that he supplies you with. And this is really cool because as you spin this out, these little arms, they move out or come in closer to hold your stamps. This whole little sled or whatever you call this carriage, it heats up, heating up your dies no matter what size they are. And also, if you've got oversized dies for this little carriage here, these other types of holders are also available which slide into this little head here. What I also like about it is that it's got an adjustable head so this can come up or down depending on your needs for your dies and for your embossing dies. It, it locks if it's too far down so it actually lines up your stuff every single time so that you don't lose your position and it falls nicely into position as you come down. 
What's really cool about this is if you lift this or unscrew this little knob back here, you can move it aside and you can place your material, whether it be leather, paper, whatever you want to put in here, it swings away so it's easily accessible. The way you line up stuff on this machine too is really cool because it comes with these little guides. You can you know, change it to your specific dimensions or sizes so that every time you put some material in there, it's lined up and ready to go. If there's other questions you have about the machines, any one of these machines that I'm talking about today, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it as, as best as I can. But for now, to the next machine. I have that machine and we're gonna talk about it soon, but I like the vertical oh. way of- Oh, hey, how's it going? Didn't notice you guys watching me over there. As I was editing this video, I was thinking about why are people watching this content? And I think a lot of the time it's to learn something. Online learning is the new wave of the future, if I can put it that way. I've learned all of my video editing, photography, even leather craft online. So I wanted to talk about today's sponsor and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes for curious and creative people like you and me. Whether you wanna learn video editing, photo editing, creative writing, uh, culinary, anything you want, Skillshare has got you covered. Skillshare is specifically curated for online learning, meaning no ads and they're always launching new exciting classes. I wish I had Skillshare way back in the day because I spent a lot of time scouring the internet to learn things. With Skillshare, it's all in one place and you can take as many classes as you would like for one low price. Speaking about price, Skillshare is super affordable. With an annual subscription, it's less than $10 a month. That is a no brainer. One class that I think is super important, especially in my field, is product photography. The class by Rachel and Daniel from Mango Street Lab called DIY Product Photography, Style and Shoot Creative Stills. It's such a great class to take, especially if you are in the online e-commerce world. How do you make your photos stand out? How do you capture your audience's attention? It's a great class and the takeaway from it is something that will help you for years to come, especially if you wanna grow an online business. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So why not explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or just get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online learning community? What you find just might surprise you and inspire you, and it could change your life. All right, let's get back to this video. Sideways? I don't know, what do you think, Max? This right here is my drill press, my WEN drill press. I went on Amazon and bought the cheapest drill press I possibly could because I wasn't using it for drilling, I was using it for burnishing, and all I really needed was a variable speed drill press. It's a great machine and I use this a lot of the time when we're not hand burnishing. This is a hand wooden slicker, hand burnisher. We use this all the time, mostly for finishing. This will get you a nice clean burnish right away. And then after you'll go in with your hands and, and just put that nice finishing sauce on the edges there. I like using a, a drill press rather than like a bench grinder converted into a, or a bench sander converted into a, uh, a burnishing machine like the one that Tandy has. And I have that machine and we're gonna talk about it soon. But I like the vertical way of burnishing your edges because I find holding it sideways, I don't know, what do you think, Max? Do you like holding it sideways better or this way? That way. Yeah, I like holding it better this way too because it just, I think you can see the burnish better and you can see what kind of a job it's doing rather than this way. I don't know, I, I've always found myself doing it this way and I really, really like it. This is a Coco Bolo burnisher drum, and I like the Coco Bolo because it's, it's really smooth right out of the gate. A lot of wooden slickers, when you first get them, Max is looking for it, when you first get them are very rough, and, and they do work. Like, when I first got this Tandy slicker, it was very rough, and you have to earn your patina. You have to earn, earn that respect with your tool, but it's just, I like the Coco Bolo right away because it's really, really hard, and it doesn't rough, doesn't take time to break in the tool, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This drill press, they're, they're made, uh, they're built to be nice and straight, so um, you're not getting wobble in the spindle here or in the axle, <laughs> I don't know, in the shaft. Um, and it's really, it's just a, it's just convenient and I like that. And when I talk about no wobble in the spindle or in the shaft here, it's so important and I'll tell you why because I have another machine that I thought would be great. It just didn't work for me. So let's go on to the next machine. This machine is the Craft Tool Pro Heat Imprinter. I use this a lot, I use it a lot. So the reason I use this machine more than I would like to, um, 
no offense against Tandy or Craft Tool. It's just, it's not as good as the other machine in terms of build quality. Um, it is just a it's, a, it's a Chinese machine. It says right here, made in China. It's not the best quality control. This head here, I had to, I had to level myself and it took quite a bit. I just want tools that work right out of the box. I don't wanna have to play around with them for hours, um, especially when I got a lot of work to do and, and it doesn't work right. But anyway, I got it because of the price and I thought, hey, maybe I can sacrifice some money here and some money there and get tools that kind of work. Here's a piece of leather. You put it in there, you turn on the switch. What I like about this machine actually is that it has a digital display. It tells you what you've set your temperature to and what the current temperature is right now of the press head here. So it's at 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it feels about 20 degrees. <laughs> the sliding trays, convenient enough. I actually really like the swivel head better, but that's just me. It really only fits this style. And I think that's really stupid on the part of Tandy because you're limited to just using this. And it sucks because all of us have many different types of dies and many different types of, of stamps that we want to use. And if we're not able to use them, what's the point of this machine? Now I know other stamp makers like Leather Stamp Maker, they can see and see you, your stamp in the shape of this, but that's just, it's annoying. Why not just go with something that you can use any stamp, anytime, you don't have to worry about getting your stamp from a certain supplier. Really stupid in my opinion. I, I had to go to one of my friends, he's actually got a CNC machine, which is great, but I had to cut mine out in that shape, which it was annoying and frustrating, and I'm, I'm gonna stop right now about that, but if you're on a budget, try and look, at, try and look for a different machine. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough said. Tandy, those are my two cents. Cha-ching. Let's go to the other machine. It's another Tandy machine and uh, we'll talk about it. As you can tell, I am not in love with this machine. Um, this is the Tandy Craft Tool Pro burnishing machine. I don't know why they have the name Pro in there. It is, I'll stop talking about that. <laughs> I got this machine because it was a burnisher slash sander machine and it, it, does, it does things, <laughs> just not well. Um, and what it does is exactly what I said. One side is a sander and the other side is a burnishing wheel, but I don't have it on here because I've got a burnisher over there. Um, so I took it off. But uh, this tool, in theory, if it worked well, I would really like it. Um, you've got your variable speeds here. You can go all the way from zero to 8,000 RPM. It's not even turning on. If you want to uh, sand really, really smoothly, what I do is I crank up the speed on the machine and then just barely kiss the sides of the leather that I want to sand and it works really well. The problem with this particular machine is that um, this, the shaft is not straight. It's kind of skewed so it's micro jittering so you're not actually touching the wheel of the sander at all times. You can see that here it's, it's getting material off but here it's like it's not even ever been touched and then here it is and same with the burnisher. The burnisher, since the shaft is not straight, it wasn't, it was like wobbling. And so you're burnishing your edges and you're not burnishing it properly. It's getting, what I'm trying to say is it, it's not working well, <laughs> basically. But it's a good concept, pretty good price point too. So if you're looking to get a cost friendly machine, the Craft Tool Pro burnishing machine, it works. Maybe I just got a bad faulty machine, but anyway, enough bashing. Uh, this is the, the sander that I use. Down the road, I will probably pick up a Cobra uh, burnishing machine or even Weaver. Weaver has a really cool burnishing and uh, sanding machine. But again, the, the reason why I like using that other burnishing machine is because of the vertical spindle, the vertical shaft. I just find burnishing is a lot easier for me and my workflow. This is the Glowforge. And I'm sure if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I love this machine. It is not only good for leather, it's good for acrylic, wood, 
you can etch on countless materials, you can score, you can do a lot of things with this machine. But what I use it for mostly is my acrylic patterns that I sell on my website um, for prototyping. Um, this watch band was actually prototyped on this. There's so many possibilities, so many things that you can bring to your business because of this machine. It is not the cheapest machine out there on the market, I'll tell you that much, but it is definitely something that is not just an expense, it's an investment because you're going to use this to make money. With other machines in your shop, you open the doors to many new products or, or things that you never thought you'd even get into. This is the Glowforge Pro. There are three models to this machine. I'm not gonna do a sales pitch. You've probably already seen that in one of my other videos, but the Glowforge Pro allows you to cut faster because of the higher wattage. and also has a pass-through slot right here that you can pass through material through the back and it allows you to cut unlimited this way, but you are limited this way but that's fine. Depending on what you want to do, you got options. Professional industrial machines can cost upwards of $40,000, $50,000, depending on what machine you have. For this price point, I think the, the Glowforge Pro is at around $6,000 US. It is expensive, like I said, but if it's going to be making you money, if it's going to be expanding your product line, I think it's worth the investment. If you want to save up to $500 off of a Glowforge, click the link in the description below and you will be on your way to creating cool things. And I was actually told by Glowforge there is no Black Friday sales or, or whatever. They are already offering as low price as they can, but you get an additional $500 off. The Glowforge Pro. So on to the first of the sewing machines, probably my favorite machine I own currently. This is a Adler 669 Eco. It's pricey, but it does the job well and repeatedly well. I had a little bit of trouble setting it up at first, getting everything dialed in properly. There's a few tweaks I had to make with reverse stitching and forward stitching, making sure they were lining up well. But once that's dialed in, this thing works like a dream. The stitch looks incredible and I have no complaints. It's actually a uh, cylinder arm machine that has an added flat bed attachment here. I wish the attachment was actually bigger, but I really like it because you can actually have so many different micro adjustments to, to really customize uh, the way that you work with this machine and then also the way that um, the stitch is produced and just, it's, it's a really nice machine. We've installed a drop down edge guide here, a little light right here, and also the super expensive Ikea lamp I think they're like $14 or something like that. I've got them all over the shop. They're, they're incredible. I really like them, especially for sewing machines. On to the next machine. This machine right here is a bell skiver. And what a skiver does, what a bell skiver does, is it pretty much it thins out edges of leather so that you can either roll them or if you're stacking pockets in, inside of wallets on top of each other, you don't want that leather to be really thick because as you add pockets on top of pockets, you're gonna have all that leather stack up on each other and it's just like this big stack of leather that you can't put any cards inside. So a bell skiver really just takes off extra material that you don't want, thins it out, and it just makes your life a lot more easy. This is the second machine I ever purchased. Um, I borrowed money from my dad to buy this machine uh, along with the other machine I'm gonna show you four, five years ago, and I have not looked back. It has been used every single day. It functions well, it works well, and if you keep this blade nice and sharp, you're gonna be laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> that was dumb. Who says that anymore? What this is here, it's a nice little uh, accessory for this. It, it tells you how thin your leather is. Here in North America, we measure our leather in thickness called ounce, ounces. Like how, how many ounces thick is that leather? And I have no idea why people use ounces. I would rather everybody just use millimeters because that makes a lot more sense. Basically, this is just a gauge that you put your leather in here. It'll read out in ounces or in millimeters. And so I believe this one is three to four. I haven't looked at the screen yet, but this will tell you how thick the leather is. Yeah, this is a really good accessory to see how consistent your skives are. So you want all of your skives looking the same. So you'll adjust the machine right here with this lever. This is a lever to actually engage the foot and then you can adjust via this screw how deep or thick the amount of material you're taking off is and it's really cool. So I suggest if you have the money in your budget, this is a machine you will not regret getting 100%. It's often overlooked, but it'll add that much more class and that much more professionalism 
to your work pieces, to your projects. And I think 100% it's a go. And now we've come to the final stop on this tour, and this is the Juki 1508N. And this is a flatbed sewing machine. This is probably one of my most prized possessions when it comes to Leathercraft. This is the machine that started it all. Um, I get a little sentimental with this machine just because it's done so many of my products in the past. And I actually got this machine because of a guy named Parker. I'm Parker Litchfield. We're gonna talk about sewing machines. Yeah. <laughs> and you probably know Parker from Stock and Barrel. He's the guy that started it all for me. I watched a ton of his videos. He's great at what he does. He's honest. He's just a great all-around crafter and he knows what he's talking about. He got a Juki 1508N and I had to get one because I wanted to be like Parker. So Parker, if you're watching this, thanks man. Your friendship is just so, so precious to me, man. Just to know that, hey, we got people in the leathercraft world like you. The Juki 1508N is a beautiful machine, especially if you are just sewing flat wallets, journals. Um, I've sewed bags with this. I've done a whole bunch of things with this machine and it's a great machine. I've got my speed reducer that I've added to this thing, the drop down edge guide, the little lights, all these little bells and whistles that really help you uh, obtain a really good result. A machine is meant to help you achieve your maximum productivity, but also the highest quality that you can pump out. So the Juki 1508N is a prime example of great Japanese engineering and just overall goodness. A lot of these machines, almost all of these heavy duty machines, like my sewing machines, these two, the Skyver, the Clicker Press, were all purchased locally at a place called Samards. Um, Samards is in Cambridge, Ontario. If you're in Canada or the US, you should definitely check out Samards. I will leave a link in the description below and you can check them out yourselves. They sell a ton of used machinery. I bought this used, I bought this used, I bought my clicker press used. The Adler was brand new, but I got them all from there. If you wanna save 5% off of anything at Samards, mention Little King Goods, Brian from Little King Goods, and you will get 5% off of your machine. I hope that this little tour of the machines I have in my shop has helped you um, maybe make decisions, what you need, what you don't need. But so far in the last three, four years, these machines have kind of become my family. They've really helped me grow to where I am today. And I could not have done it without these machines. For now, happy crafting, stay safe, God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.